Did you know that uncontrollable worry is an anxiety disorder that typically starts in childhood? It's a disorder that is usually lifelong and comes and goes over the course of your life. I'm going to tell you about a non-medication help for it that's not talked about much. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Uncontrolled worry is one of the hallmarks of generalized anxiety disorder. And this is different from obsessive compulsive disorder, where you have obsessional thoughts or rituals that you have to perform. It's also different from panic disorder, where you have sudden attacks of anxiety with lots of physical symptoms. Many people with anxiety have a mixture of all of these, by the way. But with generalized anxiety, you tend to anticipate worst case scenarios, worry about negative outcomes, and feel a lot of fear about the negative scenarios. It's like you have a super sensitive threat meter. And even if you know that your worry is unreasonable or find a way to be reassured for the moment, you still can't help entertaining the fearful thoughts and running them over and over in your mind. A sign that your anxiety is causing functional impairment or interfering with your daily activities it's when it races out of control at night and keeps you awake. So there's a loss of control of your ability to tune out these thoughts or distract yourself from them. If you're one who has worked hard at meditating and using exercises to reduce your anxiety, you may be able to turn down the volume on these thoughts, but it's like a script running in the background that you can't completely quiet. That negative commentary that you can't make go away can start to make you feel depressed and hopeless. Why does this happen? A current theory that has gained a lot of traction is that this uncontrolled worry comes from deficits and attentional control and its effect on your working memory. Attentional control is a higher level brain function called an executive function. Your attentional control has two parts. One is the ability to sustain your focus on a task and block out other distractions. The other is the ability to shift your attention from one task to another. Let me say that a different way. If you have good attentional control, you can sustain focus on a task and filter out things that don't relate to the task. You are also able to cleanly move your attention from one task to another without the previous task distracting you from doing a new task. A common example of this is being able to work on a project, then stop before you're finished to go to a meeting. Then you can pay full attention in the meeting without still working through your project in your head. When that meeting is over, you can resume your project and leave what happened in the meeting behind while you finish your project. The ability to do this is based on the strength of your neural pathways that make these actions possible. So with anxiety and depression, these nerve pathways are disrupted or not functioning properly. And this makes you unable to filter out information and let go of the thoughts that cause you this distress. So for an example, you can go to a nice dinner party or a socially distanced gathering. And even though people are talking and having fun, you can't stop the worry tape from playing in your head. The person without an anxiety disorder or someone who maybe has mild symptoms can shift their attention to the positive activity that's right there in front of them and block out the other thoughts. So the party is able to distract them from their worries. That's one of the differences between situational anxiety and an anxiety disorder. When you have situational anxiety, you worry about whether you're going to lose your job after the company announces cutbacks or you fear that you may lose your home before you get your stimulus check. These are real worries that people have in those situations, but those worries are temporary and people can usually distract themselves from them if they can find other things to focus on. So here's something that shows real promise for helping you get more control over your thoughts. It's called brain training games or cognitive training. These specialized exercises boost attentional control and improve your working memory. That improvement in your executive function has positive effects on your emotional functioning. There's a research reference in the description from 2019 
where they used the training in teenagers to reduce emotional vulnerability. That's huge, because as I mentioned earlier, anxiety disorders start early. If we can get better control of the problem earlier, it can make a huge difference for the quality of your life as an adult. But even if you've already dealt with anxiety for years, the brain training can still have benefit for the adult brain because the cognitive exercises have shown to improve neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the ability of your brain to change the nerve connections and rewire itself. So here's why I really like this finding. The brain training exercises are not just something used by researchers. They are commercially available options that can be used on a self-help basis. One such company is called CogniFit. They've been around for a while, and they have a version available for clinicians and educators, but they also have a version for personal use. You're able to take a cognitive assessment to see what your weaknesses are, then choose the games that can help you build up your skills. You can see an example of what a testing report looks like, and you can sample the brain games to get a feel for what they're like. This video is not sponsored by CogniFit, and I get no financial benefit from recommending them. It's just one option you can explore for scientifically validated brain training games that are available to the public. On the issue of brain training, take a look at this video that I have talking about learning to play a musical instrument to improve your mental capacity and your brain plasticity. It's just another tool in your arsenal to improve your mental health. Thanks for watching. See you next time.